uh, Maxim Salnikov. Well, I'm uh, now I can say ex developer. I started in, uh, in late 90s of last century as webmaster. Uh, of course, uh, like every webmaster of those years, I uh, created my own silly naive uh, content management system, PHP, MySQL, all these uh, technologies that are still uh, pretty much uh, relevant these days. Uh, after I moved to Norway in 2011, I uh, discovered for myself communities. Uh, and instead of being just a, like a coder in the corner, you know, the classical one, I started to visit meetups, started to co-organize, organize, uh, found a couple of conferences. And yeah, uh, now being part of community is just part of my personality. It's not even related to job because, uh, yeah, it, it all started way before I joined Microsoft five years ago. And uh, yeah, I often um, speak about uh, technologies, sometimes uh, do kind of workshops and very occasional, uh, occasionally write the blogs. And uh, what, what I do in Microsoft, um, I have long and boring in internal job title, but in the big picture, I help developers to succeed with uh, tools we build for developers. You know, Microsoft uh, builds tons of uh, services, products, everything. Uh, and I'm happy to work specifically with the ones that are exposed for developer audience. Yeah, and this is close to my heart, close to my mind uh, as a developer. And this uh, uh, random, not random uh, photo of me delivering maybe a world's first DJ set that uh, contains only AI generated house music. This is uh, my interest to open AI. Actually, I have to update it. It's not, not just open AI, but generative AI uh, in more general sense. And I can say that, uh, yeah, current state of um, AI and generative AI in particular is good enough to uh, create nice, dense tunes, completely fresh every single time, uh, almost in, in real time. Okay, yeah, you may be uh, not, not super inspired by uh, some, some business um, uh, numbers as developers, but uh, for those of you who participate in sales, and I assume, yeah, uh, JPro is commercial commercial organization, right? Um, you, you, you have to chat with uh, uh, customers or potential customers. The AI or generative AI is a significant part of uh, all technical story these days. And almost all organizations believe that AI will give their competitive edge. And uh, over half of all organizations worldwide already have something related to um, AI in their stack of services and products. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's uh, inevitable. It's here. It's today. And um, maybe last slide with some some dollars uh, on um, on the deck is um, it's quite good return on investment and uh, it's quite quick and fast time to value. If you want some public ready supporting materials on how to convince customers more in uh, like, uh, bringing up and building uh, AI and generative AI services, I have set of decks for you just in me if they are industry based so you, i mean you, you you'll find some very nice supporting material to uh, have very uh, uh, say detailed and um, fruitful discussion with the customer and it's 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 fun enough that these days or maybe i mean at least uh, uh, when uh, this general fair hype started it was not uh, like, uh, there is issue and there is solution uh, when customer uh, comes to us with um, uh, to chat about generative but vice versa customer come, uh, customers come to us and ask we want to introduce something with generative ai find uh, help us to find to identify what we can do so it's like vice versa it's, uh, but of course now it's maturing and uh, more and more companies clearly understand when and uh, where to apply and i have a few slides to to help to navigate this um I don't know how deep uh, are you and uh, like personally and as J Pro familiar with uh, Azure Stack. I mean, I did a brief investigation on uh, JPro. Uh, and I've seen that yeah, you you listed Azure as a cloud you work with. I uh, couldn't find uh, .NET as one of the back backend uh, languages, but yeah, of course, ob obviously every consultancy in Norway has uh, its own specialization. But um, I assume that. Uh, yeah, you are at least interested in learning more about Azure because, yeah, in Norway, uh, 
one of only few countries in Europe when, where Azure officially won cloud market with quite good margin. And uh, I mean, it's safe bet for uh, all organizations here, especially if you talk about public sector, yeah, you know, Microsoft with uh, its uh, enterprise uh, history, enterprise roots. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, we, we are by far uh, offering best, uh, best, best uh, services and, um, and privacy, uh, governance, all these um, things that are critical when we talk about uh, moving to cloud, migrating to cloud, again, especially for public sector customers. Yeah, but uh, about AI. And way before this uh, hype with generative AI started, when OpenAI ex suddenly exposed this chat.openai.com, uh, like uh, November last, last year, when suddenly world uh, found generative AI as a term not... Um, only for data scientists, but for pretty much um, everyone. So Microsoft in this business uh, for years, uh, and uh, before all hype with uh, LLMs and and uh, Gen AI started, we uh, developed lots of uh, de developed develop and uh, will develop lots of things um, uh, more more general things, of course, that are that, that, that complement current possibilities, starting from. Infrastructure, yeah, Microsoft has uh, quite a few data centers around the world, right? We have uh, some computational power that is absolutely needed if we uh, ever start discussion about AI. Then a uh, set of services, whole families of services for data engineers, data scientists, when uh, they or you can create models from scratch, train, deploy, monitor, optimize, like pretty much uh, full, full stack. Um, uh, here we talk uh, about uh, LM Ops, and on top services for uh, like developer audience. If your if your company doesn't have data scientists in uh, org chart, you still can uh, leverage AI uh, because we have set of uh, ready to go models for uh, domains, for industries, for tasks. Just pick, pick your needed level of specialization and uh, send API call, and you will get uh, back either, um, I don't know, um, image to text or uh, text to image with uh, DALI now, or uh, translation, or uh, generation new text. I mean, it's just a question of uh, op communicating with the respective API endpoints. And recently, we organized everything under Azure AI Studio umbrella. I think I, I have a couple of slides on um, on that, What, uh, how that can simplify your life as a developer. And yeah, Microsoft, of course, is uh, actively using AI for customer-facing products. Definitely not, uh, not main focus for today and for, for this audience, except this one. So we have, we'll have a uh, separate session as, uh, on uh, GitHub for uh, on GitHub Copilot, because this is like directly relevant to developer audience. But yeah, we have a bunch of copilots and uh, more copilots to come. And these copilots are, let's say, for business users, right? And uh, it doesn't mean that it's only out of the box, like predefined copilot. They are still customizable. You can still uh, let's say make your hands dirty as a developer to customize copilots to build the new ones for our uh, modern work and uh, business stack. Uh, talking about copilot stack, um, again, the, the whole story around uh, generative AI, about Azure Open AI, about uh, copilots is maturing every single day. And I mean, what we have now is next level compared to what we have just one month before and not comparable to what we had one year ago. Uh, I mean, uh, more tools, more libraries are building while I speak and uh, more streamlined experiences for developers are also in production while I speak. And uh, I, I have lots of links to share. And by the way, uh, I will I will send PDF of this deck to Roger. So it's all shareable, uh, it contains lots of links. So maybe um, something that you can put on, put on your like uh, knowledge uh, library for j Yeah, uh, so how how th that works in a in like let's say bird eye view you have your your data foundational models the ones uh, created for you uh, you can use them out of the box or fine tune and of course um, again computational infrastructure is uh, 
essential layer as a foundation of everything. AI orchestration, this is mainly where developers' skills are needed. So this is where you actually create applications, where you actually build these backends that uh, organize this ping pong with uh, um, calling API of uh, LLM, calling API for some external services to grab data, chain, parse, everything, everything. And what you can build is, um, is on top. So either uh, customize existing copilots or build your own ones. And here uh, I... Uh, like copilot is very generic term, right? It's not only about uh, uh, representing one concrete product, but let's say it's it's AI assistant in very general sense. Not not only chatbot, by the way, because chatbot is maybe the simplest to visualize option how generative AI can uh, can bring some value to uh, to, to, to customers. Uh, but yeah, don't don't limit yourselves uh, to only that kind of experience in mind. Um, and yeah, it's very important to understand relationships between Microsoft and uh, OpenAI. These are two different companies, two different legal entities. Actually, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure that Microsoft even uh, has some stake in um, in OpenAI. But definitely, Microsoft was one of the early investors into OpenAI and continue to to invest. Uh, but uh, yeah, they are intentionally separate, right? So. Uh, uh, it's, it's very important to understand because OpenAI was the company that actually uh, started this uh, generative AI boom, revolution, hype, buzz, what, um, you name it. And uh, thanks to investment from Microsoft, I assume it was mainly in form of computational power, but I cannot say uh, for, uh, for sure, they yeah, built a set of uh, LLMs, large language models, set of artifacts that are exposable via API endpoints. I mean, uh, you as a, as a company cannot build something like that from scratch. I mean, if you are not Microsoft, Google, or, or AWS, or maybe like uh, three, five more, more companies on, on the planet, just because uh, best brains of data scientists is not enough for, for building something like that. You need uh, tremendous computational power. I, if I remember correctly, there were tens of thousands of NVIDIA chips chained together by Microsoft infrastructure professionals uh, for building super highly performant chain. And um, I don't know how, how long this training took place. Yeah, like after all, we have this, uh, these LLMs and after all, they are available for pretty much everyone as uh, just API call. Um, and thanks to this uh, early investment and contract, Microsoft has uh, exclusive permission, exclusive license for using these models for commercialized services. I mean, you can use uh, something from GPT family or DALI or Whisper only via two options, either via OpenAI directly, where you go to openai.com, register account, uh, and yeah, s s start paying them and uh, start using their APIs, or via Microsoft, and uh, more particular, via Azure OpenAI service. Uh, you decide, your customers decide which way to go, but... Um, Recommendation is openai.com is fine for uh, research, for experimentation. Maybe it's question mark for production ready uh, solutions, projects, especially uh, the ones at scale. And um, yeah, Azure, in many senses, safer choice. First of all, if customer already has something on Azure, this will be just one more natural addition to workloads you, you maintain. We provide dedicated, let's say, um, uh, throughput. Uh, we a service called uh, PTU, Provision Throughput Unit. Um, that's relevant for some real-time experience you might want to build when uh, latency is critical. And um, I mean, it's uh, it's not a secret that. C communication with generative AI API endpoints could be slow a bit, right? Uh, I, I mean, uh, the request, the completion comes not immediately. This is why there is kind of a uh, psychological trick is uh, streaming. When, when, for example, open uh, chat.openai.com, you see that text is not appearing immediately. It just appears word uh, by word or character by ca character. And uh, we, we have feeling as humans that uh, it's faster, right? But not, not in reality, right? It's just uh, 
technical trick to uh, to somehow hide latency here. But yeah, uh, you can you can get guaranteed uh, uh, maximum latency time here. Of course, when we talk about enterprise scenarios, sooner or later, in many cases, very soon, uh, it's all about how to inject your own data, company your your own data into the loop. Uh, furthermore, it's not just about adding your data. In many cases, it's about excluding uh, what open AI models know about um, outer world, but I'll focus on that later with more details. Of course, uh, like any service on Azure, it has uh, enterprise-grade security and uh, super flexible role-based access system. And last but not least in uh, that bullet, uh, bullet list point is a framework called Responsible AI. So it deserves separate conversation, separate slide deck, separate session, and um, many customers ask about this, request uh, like, um, us, how are we protected from uh, potentially harmful responses from all these um, fancy uh, generative AI and, and endpoints. I'm pretty sure that you all are aware of uh, blog posts, Twitter threads, where people try to hack ChatGPT, right? Convert it to evil mode, uh, try to by bypass all content filtering. Um, and um, yeah, it, it was maybe not, not that difficult at the beginning, but of course it's, it's like classical uh, race between um, the security uh, experts and, and let's say classical hackers, <laughs> right? They, they try to hack your program, a new um, protection introduced. Same here, right? Uh, th uh, this will be never end in craze, but of course you want to rely on something enterprise ready. I mean, maybe I can say that you are 100% protected, right? But uh, it's, it's close to this number and uh, um, it's better than by any other provider. Of course, OpenAI is a separate company, it's a separate provider of the similar services, has its own statement on uh, privacy, protection, responsible AI. But yeah, again, you know, Microsoft is uh, all about um, real serious enterprise stuff. Um, yeah, without going into details, I can say that we have full framework around that. It's not only technical tools, but first of all, it's understanding of what is responsible AI uh, governance, special teams and um, tools after all, right? So we have both uh, synchronous tools to protect from potentially harmful output and a synchronous one. Next uh, super often question from our customers is um, exactly about how their data is used in that loop because it, it, as a API based service, it's about sending some data to external API endpoint. And the question is, uh, what if there is some sensitive information in the prompt you sent? What is, um, there are some secrets. Um, after all, I mean, uh, how customers protected from not having their uh, data or parts of their data as completion for other customers' requests, right? Yeah, yeah, the, again, there are lots of uh, um, um, like uh, rumors and uh, cases and everything when people kind of I've seen and noticed their data uh, returned as uh, completion for for uh, other people request to uh, chat GPT, right? Uh, of course, um, yeah, it's um, it's not not like, like real leaks uh, or or something. It's uh, it's just how generative AI works. But in case of Azure OpenAI, it's uh, like one hundred percent clear. Your data is not available to any other customers not available to OpenAI itself as a company, right? I mean, it stays within Microsoft boundaries. Uh, not improving OpenAI models. I mean, it definitely 100% does not participate in further training of, of the models because yeah, training of the models is kind of evergreen process. And other statements. I mean, uh, as a customer, you can always get full picture on uh, where your data is flowing, what kind of uh, intervention from Microsoft can happen uh, if, if needed, if there are some, some triggers that uh, uh, like uh, signal potentially harmful either response or request. Uh, and there's a set of flexible tools for customers to either completely opt out or uh, let's say soften these content filters. Again, uh, this is um, uh, in uh, 
in production already and getting better and better and better and gain a uh, few steps ahead of uh, all uh, other offerings. Um, <laughs> so what exposed as uh, Azure Open AI points? First of all, full family of GPT models. And the uh, flow is following. Normally, some new version of the model or new model appears on openai.com. Uh, and after some, some time, and I, of course, I cannot give you exact like, number of days or, or weeks, it all depends. The same feature appears on Azure OpenAI because it takes some time for Microsoft, for, for Azure engineers to, let's say, industrialize this experience just to make sure that, again, it's safe, it's, uh, it can be used at scale, and can be exposed to, to the customers. But yeah, sooner or later, it inevitably appears on um, Azure OpenAI with, uh, with some delay. Uh, so GPT family, DALI family, uh, it's uh, like, even though we have uh, image now in the loop, in the loop, it's still, uh, let's say, descendant of large language model because it all starts with um, understanding or understanding our natural language, our human language. And only then some, some magic happens, either uh, a picture generated or uh, text to voice or, or hard to imagine what, what comes next. Um, and uh, one of the latest additions to this family of um, APIs is what we call multimodal usage of um, GPT, uh, GPT family models when you su submit both textual prompt and image or video as a part of one prompt. And it opens doors to uh, lots of mm -hmm. interesting use cases. Uh, and Definitely, it, it goes way beyond just uh, computer vision. Just, let's say, uh, hey, computer, tell what's uh, on this picture. Because this kind of functionality is in production for years. It, it's uh, no longer something uh, inspirational. But if you ask what's wrong on this picture uh, or how what, what could be improved on this picture, this is next level, right, of, uh, again, understanding in a, a very special uh, sense of this word. Uh, to help navigate customers with uh, what's possible, again, answering their questions, like, we want to use generative AI, where, how, wh uh, which extra, like, dollars for Norwegian crowns uh, you can bring to Asia. Yeah, we have multiple dimensions on how to look on what's possible. First of all, we categorize everything into four large buckets. Definitely, I'm not uh, going through um, all components of this busy slide. Um, PDF is available, so you can always uh, get back and get some inspiration. But in the big picture, everything about content generation, uh, I'm pretty sure that everyone in this room tried um, ChatGPT um, to to create texts, poems, songs, whatever. It's perfect. Uh, this this generative AI in, in general and the uh, GPT family of models in particular. Less creative, but uh, still super relevant task summarization. And uh, it can be summarization, it can uh, be, let's say, uh, classification or categorization. Also very smart. Uh, and the uh, next level uh, advancement from uh, compared to all previous, like pre generative AI, um, AI services. Code generation, and this is what we, again, um, experience. Personally, uh, in my second session very soon, uh, it's not only about generating code, it's also about understanding code. It's about explaining code, and uh, it goes way beyond just code, code. For example, scripting language, configuration language, um, DevOps, writing pull uh, request uh, descriptions, writing commit messages, everything is uh, in this bucket. bucket. And uh, last but not least, very uh, advanced search. And uh, it's not about keyword search anymore. I mean, services based on keyword search is in the past. So this is yesterday. So today, we are about uh, semantic search, uh, search that understands, again, understands our, our request and uh, much more sophisticated mm -hmm. than uh, keyword one. Uh, another dimension of how we look at what's possible to solve is, is very formal, right? What kind of uh, problems regular businesses have and how to solve these problems. Increasing productivity, both internal and uh, external services. Automate processes, maybe document processes, uh, processing is a uh, low-scanning put here. 
improving customer experience if you build, for example, a customer facing service or um, or it can improve employee experience if we talk about variety of virtual assistants. I mean, not all of them are external. There are tons of use cases where when companies build um, assistants, co-pilots, you name it, for, for their employees just to navigate through internal documentation um, uh, uh, and similar scenarios. And of course, endless opportunities for building content, for generating content, uh, I assume, Marketing startup, the marketing uh, automation startup based on generative AI appears um, every every uh, I don't know, may, not uh, second, but every minute in in the world. Uh, and third dimension, we just identified top ten use cases again based on uh, what our customers say to, to us, uh, based on their requests. Uh, whether fraud detection is one of examples from. From Norwegian companies, uh, what's the name? Schuld. Uh, so the, it's it's startup. Um, Faults build service to detect uh, is uh, send a short message sent to your phone something uh, about fraud or real one. Just using generative AI uh, for that some some smart prompting, some uh, some actions. And uh, bam, you have a new startup, and it's uh, it's quite a successful one uh, looking at uh, their current stage. Uh, how to start? This is maybe we start going deeper into technicalities. Let me check uh, the timing. Okay, that's good. Um, first of all, as uh, Microsoft's and uh, Azure commitment to responsible AI, you cannot start immediately. I mean, uh, you cannot uh, come to Azure portal, say, this is my uh, $10, I want, to, I want to start. No, you have to submit a super simple form first. Just, uh, we just want to make sure that like, you're a real company, you have a real subscription on, uh, on Azure, it can be like a newly created one. Just a few, few details, and in a few business days, you will get this uh, request approved. And now it's it's fully automated. It took some some long time in the beginning of the story, uh, but now it's just a formal step. Uh, anyway, that gives us a very better understanding on uh, who is going to use these super powerful features. Then developers build your application, build your backend that sends uh, requests to one of uh, APIs available. In 99% uh, of the cases, this will be one called completions, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk about. This a bit in more details, not about uh, like uh, API syntax, of, co of course, but what what to send, what kind of prompts to send. Uh, it's always about experimentation. I mean, your first prompt, your first uh, call, your second, your tenth one will be uh, not ideal ones, I promise. Uh, but um, after some tries with uh, prompts, with uh, different parameters, with different models, you'll come to the point when uh, you get from generative AI endpoint, what you want, what your customer want. If you, uh, yeah, it's you, JPro is called opposite, right? So you build for customers. Um, and uh, uh, then explore various options. Few of them are available to inject your data into the loop. And um, again, in, in your cases, uh, I mean, this will be your customer's data. Build product, tell me, and uh, my pleasure to share this on, uh, on LinkedIn. My, 25,000 connections will give you uh, some uh, some attention um, in, in the world. <coughs> um, yeah, maybe a technical audience uh, here not very inspired by my explanation to, to business audience how API works in general, right? So request, response, API gate, and set of foundational uh, large language models ready on, uh, on other side, or it could be Google side uh, with uh, their own set of models. Um, so they call them vertexes, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, uh, and other, like there are many providers of uh, these large language models. And the uh, idea is uh, always always the same. Question is uh, in like exact uh, let's say, format of, of API. By the way, I forgot to say that uh, transition between open AI to uh, b between using GPT uh, endpoints uh, on uh, via OpenAI as a company to uh, Azure OpenAI as a service is seamless. The API syntax is the same, so we always keep this uh, 
uh, 100% the same. So once you start experimenting on OpenAI, uh, you can then easily switch to, like, let's say, this uh, production and enterprise ready on um, on Azure. And pricing also is the same. We will uh, come to pricing a, a bit uh, a bit later. Yeah. So question not not uh, not about this flow. Question about uh, what to send as a request. And uh, this is a uh, question that also deserves separate session, separate deck, um, separate event, I'd say. And uh, I'll uh, also share something around that with you. Uh, prompt engineering, it's a completely new uh, discipline. And maybe there are not so many people who are 100% prompt engineers in the world, but this number is uh, increasing. Uh, and there is a substantial number of, um, of of people, many of them are developers, but not not obligatory, uh, who have prompt engineering as a prominent part of their day-to-day -day responsibilities. I mean, uh, this is uh, somewhere in between of being technical, understanding natural language, maybe being a bit uh, like psychologist, maybe being a bit uh, data science. So it's a fusion, fusion of um, of skills mm -hmm. that allows you to build the most optimal prompts when you communicate with uh, generative AI services. And by the way, it's equally relevant for OpenAI, for Azure OpenAI, for models by Google, models by Meta. So the idea is absolutely the same. Uh, so it's, it's not somehow locking you to, 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 to Azure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we look at um, kind of generic prompt, we can uh, split it into uh, multiple components of the prompt or prompt anatomy, if you wish. Uh, in this uh, very like simplified and sim maybe not very synthetic, but definitely very uh, simplified uh, example, where we build marketing automation service that helps us to build uh, emails. Uh, for this or that occasion. In that case, we ask uh, generate email for launch of uh, new headphones. This is our instruction, and sometimes these instructions are not that explicitly visible. So you know how uh, ChatGPT works. It will answer anything you submitted, right? With con uh, clear order or just uh, I don't know chain of your thoughts, you will get an answer. This is nature of. Uh, LLMs and, and Gen AI, but of course, in uh, this enterprise uh, scenarios, it, it's a good idea to be very clear, as clear as possible, I'd say. Also, we provide some primary data, uh, we provide some secondary data to set uh, some, some context, and in this case, we ask about uh, the tone we expect, friendly, exciting. We want, uh, some, sometimes we might want to help LLM to uh, like, uh, no, 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 sorry, not, not help, but we, we want to be explicit in the format we expect. And in this uh, sample, it's clearly visible that um, response from, from this prompt will be used somewhere else. I mean, it, it will not go directly to the customer. It will be used uh, in the next uh, node of um, our backend chain. So we uh, very explicitly ask about, yeah, build JSON for us with uh, these fields. And actually, example, uh, here place two roles in this even simplified um, set. So it both doubles down on format, right? So we, we explained format here and we explained by example. And also we uh, give example what kind of tone we, we need, what kind of text we need. Um, in many cases, it helps. And um, yeah, I, I, I have um, a slide on uh, providing examples. And I, uh, having Q is, is totally unneeded. But it's um, mainly for, for some, let's say, edge case scenarios. So this this was how how we look at prompt, and this is how LLM on the side of uh, LLM provider is uh, understanding understanding the prompt. But first of all, it splits everything into tokens. Token is very inter, uh, important concept um, in um, your communication with um, LLM um, because of multiple things. First of all, you you pay based on the number of tokens you send and receive. Again, maybe this is a, this pricing model relevant not for all uh, existing LLM providers in the world, but it's mainstream. I mean, the uh, vast majority of providers um, uh, charge you like that. 
And second, there is always limitation on number of tokens you can send as a as a part of prompt. This is what called uh, context window, and this is technical limitation. Even though it's uh, expanding, expanding, and expanding, it exists. Um, yeah, token. Uh, first of all, I'm not data scientist. I, I'm not uh, here to explain uh, all all the details. But in very simple uh, words, the the more often word was met in the like, training set, the the larger chance that this word will be considered as as one token. Of course, it's like completely different if we say about more complex things like uh, like. Uh, uh, commas and uh, the, the, and the, all these you know non non character signs and non uh, non regular words. Um, I mean, there is no clear rule how to split into tokens, but there are tons of different let's say tokenizers that can give you uh, at least uh, uh, rough understanding how many tokens will be in this particular um, message. And yeah, back to back to pricing. This is a screenshot from uh, Azure OpenAI service. Maybe it's um, a few months old on, on this deck. Maybe prices uh, changed. And the good point here, if like it, it, at least from all previous experience, if prices change, uh, change they uh, they reduce. I mean, uh, some some companies, some startups uh, had to recalculate uh, their business models uh, in and uh, yeah in, in positive side. Um, this again, this is this is uh, evolution of, uh, of services and uh, models more more and more efficient, and of course uh, prices are uh, going down. And Microsoft has a price parity with OpenAI, so we do not compete uh, in prices here. Uh, and uh, unlike many API uh, providers, you uh, you worked with before, this one is uh, interesting. This is where you pay both for number of tokens you send and number of tokens you, you receive. Also, something to keep in mind um, when you, for example, estimate uh, some, some pricing for usage for, for the customer. And of course, it depends on concrete model. Also, a uh, very good idea to come up with some model selection strategy. It's simple. Normally, you start with the most expensive one. You find your best mm -hmm. prompt that uh, does job in a satisfactory way, and then you can try to downgrade to simpler model, for in this case, from GPT-4 to uh, 3.5, uh, to save some dollars. If results are still good, you just stay there. Uh, if not good, you try to optimize your prompt, and uh, maybe you'll find the one that um, again, will save some uh, some dollars. And you see that it's uh, actually a couple of orders cheaper. It's not uh, something insignificant if we talk about some you know, massive usage of this. But, but again, you see, we charge for thousands of tokens, some zero, 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 Something sense. I mean, um, it's it's not about something substantial for every single request, even for uh, relatively long ones. And um, this context is actually a limitation of, of number of uh, tokens you can send. You see, that's uh, about thousands of them. Uh, definitely uh, not <clears throat> not something for you to worry about if uh, to send one paragraph of text or two, even like one page of text or two. But uh, definitely, you cannot submit all uh, Harry Potter book in uh, in one request. It's still possible, but uh, with some. Uh, Prompt chunking te uh, techniques. Uh, more technical stuff about space efficiency. Uh, efficiency again, if you talk about let's say massive uh, usage of these APIs, every token can can matter, right? Uh, and um, sometimes you just put some some extra white spaces, not very visible, right? But every of them um, normally takes um, token uh, formats. Sometimes counterintuitive. Um, example with the date, right? Uh, we as, uh, as as humans and uh, I, I personally as developer often say, okay, the shortest uh, format is the most efficient. But uh, it, in this concrete particular example, it's exactly vice versa. So if you try to uh, provide date with very short and very like uh, technical format, it will take six tokens. If we are full uh, date, uh, it's just three tokens. So on, on top is the most efficient, um, bottom is uh, less efficient. I mean, we saved two times on just selecting proper format of the date. Um, if you want to submit something as a, as a table, just submit it as a table. I mean, use pipes or tabs, something just regular. Separators will need to kind of uh, mimic JSON here. Uh, and also languages uh, make difference. And uh, obviously, the vast majority of uh, training materials were in English. This is why English is the most efficient token-wise. Token I mean, if you take 
one sentence in English, convert, uh, translate it to Norwegian and uh, pass it to tokenizer just to see, you'll see that normally uh, Norwegian version will take more tokens, just, just for you to know. Uh, general recommendations on prompting. Be as specific as possible. Uh, try to experiment with order of this prompt component. There is no any kind of predefined rules. It's a question of experimentation. Sometimes you might want to double down uh, on some information you provided in the prompt. Again, sounds a bit uh, counterintuitive, but it's, for, 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 it, it started to, like to, to feel like you really communicate with um, LLM on the other side, like with human, and uh, sometimes you need to say something twice, right, or for the, our vis-a-vis to understand better. It's the case here as well. Um, if you talk about uh, some formal usage like uh, classification, like uh, uh, summarization, it's a very good idea to give model an out. Uh, what, what, what I mean, uh, just, just be very specific. If you don't know which category to use, say, I don't know, or like uh, provide this, uh, this JSON object or whatever. I mean, uh, it will take less time for you to go through these unknown uh, results rather than check uh, what's in these categories if you are a bit um, unsure about the uh, efficiency here. Uh, more technical recommendations. So, like, um, still, even though no rules, no exact rules for ordering, normally it starts with a concrete uh, task, concrete order from outside, and if results are not satisfactory, you might want to repeat the same instruction or same or slightly reformulated at the end of the prompt. Um, use clear syntax uh, separation. There is no any kind of predefined syntax how to uh, differentiate different parts of the prompt. I normally use uh, like three hash uh, symbols uh, or just, just use uh, my minuses. I mean, you will find uh, some, some format that, uh, that works. Don't try to multitask within, within um, one prompt, just um, again to expect more uh, predictable results. And in addition to the prompt, you can also provide some parameters in your API call. Um, again, in particular case of uh, GPT and, um, and OpenAI, these parameters called temperature and top probabilities, they both control, let's say, level of creativity. Let's, uh, for content generation purposes, um, you can uh, put it to the maximum, and then uh, results are less and less deterministic. I mean, the results will be different every every time, or almost every time you send the same prompt. Uh, vice versa, if you talk about some formal things, like categorization, classification, maybe you put it uh, to, to the minimum, again, to have more deterministic results. Very uh, short and also simplified example on um, zero shot versus uh, few shot prompts. And by shot, we mean providing examples. Uh, we are insurance company that, uh, or, 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 or uh, IT company that builds service for insurance company for them to uh, have first level of support somehow automated and just categorize claims uh, and uh, Customer provides some like email or chatbot conversation, and we want to put it into either auto insurance or home flood insurance. Also, in, in this prompt, we use one of the best practices I introduced. We give model out. Uh, so if uh, model, if if uh, LLM is um, not sure, you better say that it's not relevant to insurance rather than still like force put into one of the categories. And here comes the question itself. So you paste it from uh, again your email uh, or chatbot conversation. This is one example. If that works, perfectly fine. I just uh, keep it as is, just uh, monitor this, just uh, check, uh, just estimate uh, quality from time to time. This is uh, uh, about, uh, let's say, full cycle of um, software development. If not, you just inject some educational examples into one uh, single prompt. It's the, the same prompt, just uh, enriched with a couple of samples. Uh, and then, in many cases, results will be um, better than the ones that you expect the most. Now, it was a um, positive side about uh, experience, right? It might sound like a dream, dream feature and a silver bullet for lots of things, but negative. And Cambridge Dictionary identify word of the year every single year. And word of the year for uh, last year is directly related to generative AI, to large language models in uh, particular. Uh, 
I said, I already said the stage, it's a negative connotation. And uh, I also did my best not to pronounce this uh, word uh, during my uh, narrative today. Any, any suggestions on what, what, what uh, stops some of, uh, some of potential use cases from uh, using generative AI more often? Hallucination. Absolutely, yes. A uh, word of uh, the year in Cambridge Dictionary is hallucinate, specifically in the uh, context of large language models. When output, when completion you, you receive is looking like truth. It's very convincing. Uh, and you can easily trust it, but it's fake. It's either like uh, made up or just uh, false, and you have to do something with that, right? There are lots of um, techniques to uh, eliminate or at least uh, reduce hallucination. Uh, in some cases, uh, you want to say to model not only what to provide, but also what not to provide, <coughs> right? Um, Giving model an out already um, highlighted in our session. Sometimes just silly statement like don't make up facts help in uh, in very simple scenarios. Don't ignore this. Uh, sometimes you may, might want to ask like model, like if you're unsure about uh, what I ask, are you like, what kind of extra information do you need to fulfill my my uh, my question, or then I, I mean, this will be not just a one shot API call. It's a chain of the calls, but again, um, uh, we are here for solving serious tasks. Sometimes uh, we want to ask model just uh, to think step by step and also explain a chain of thoughts. What how how model actually gets to this result? And um, in in some cases. See, adding simple sentence, uh, think step by step, also help. Uh, and I mean, you will not only get output of a uh, chain of thoughts of the model, the final result will be different. And in the uh, vast majority of scenarios, much more correct than, than before. Uh, but all these uh, methods are nothing compared to this one. Uh, if you don't want model to make up facts, supply your own facts to this model. So here we comes to uh, the fact that uh, we need to use our own data. Uh, this is a very busy slide, I tell you in advance, and I'm not going to uh, go through every enterprise use cases we uh, identified um, uh, among our customers, and this is a detailed description of these use cases. I want to highlight something common in all these scenarios, and this is the fact that they are all based on using company-owned data. I mean, uh, chat.openai.com is fun, but it's completely unsuitable for um, for building something enterprise-ready, um, or company-ready. No, I mean, we are not talking about like huge enterprise solution, just just like small company, uh, small startup. Um, if you build something for yourself, or uh, you still cannot rely on the knowledge model gathered from internet because LLMs, large language models, again, not only GPT, not only uh, ones by OpenAI, very pretty much all ones have two superpowers. First of all, thanks to enormous corpus of uh, text they uh, were trained on, they know a lot about us, about our world, about uh, our facts. Like whole Wikipedia is somewhere in the digital brain of um, these models and very like strange format, I'd say. And second, based on this, they can recursively generate next token in their um, sequence. And yeah, you, so you, you develop, you understand me, how it works. You supply your prompt, it's split into tokens. Based on uh, this sequence of tokens, LLM generates next token in this sequence, then takes new prompt the, the, that was just generated and does the same. So every single time it's just recursively generating n plus one, not word, not character, but token. Again, this is just a just technical detail. So uh, well, for, for enterprise scenarios, uh, again, by saying enterprise, I, I don't mean like lo huge corporations. Uh, but I, I just mean any, any company scenario. We want to discard this, right? We don't want to uh, rely on the knowledge of model uh, from uh, from external sources because 
In some cases, let's say in many cases, in vast majority of, of scenarios, model give you an answer, but it can be hallucinated. And uh, one uh, uh, made up answer, one false answer can just uh, ruin your reputation of your service, right? So you don't want to rely on that. You want to supply your own pack, but, but still, of course, this knowledge is needed just for understanding of um, human language. So we talk about uh, model grounding. Uh, this is the process of actually, let's say, model is flying somewhere in the air with our uh, own data, dreams, everything. So we want to take it and ground it to our, our own data. Um, prompt engineering can solve this uh, task in vast majority of scenarios when we inject data straight into the prompt. If for some cases it's not an option, you can take the model and fine tune this. So you rearrange weights of uh, yeah, within this model. In some very rare occasion, you, you might want to uh, train model from scratch, but yeah, in most cases you you don't need it. Uh, it's it's for super niche scenarios when we talk about I don't know some domains, uh, concrete domains, I don't know biomolecular something where you have your own perfect set of training data, then you can uh, build it here. So let's let's focus on this one, and it works like this: in the prompt. In, uh, in addition to the question, again, here we uh, imaginary example of employee asking about what's available in insurance plan provided by, by their company, some internal um, user, um, improving user experience service. And in the same prompt, we just inject the, the relevant sources of information for answering this concrete question. Then response will be something that you, you expect. And or you, you see, uh, also here we very explicitly ask answer the following question using only data provided in sources below. Again, no space for imagination. Maybe you have to be more strict, uh, you have to double down that it, it might be simplified, uh, right? But um, again, this, this is how that works. And uh, if not reducing, but mitigating hallucination to, um, to bare minimum. Of course, the big question here is how to identify relevant sources of information based on uh, question in uh, in natural language. And again, yeah, keyword search is not a good helper here. Uh, even if you have like sophisticated, advanced uh, internal knowledge base, you have to uh, be very uh, like you have to find interesting technical solution. And uh, in vast majority of scenarios, if you talk about prompt engineering based uh, hallucination reduction and in general building copilots, building virtual assistants, you end up very soon with uh, using pattern or methodology or technique, you name it, called retrieval augmented generation rack. This is where first based on a question from the user, you query your knowledge base. And uh, by the way, generative AI can also help you here. So based on the inquiry from the user, based on this raw text from them, uh, one of uh, prompts you, you sent to generative AI can help you to build proper request to knowledge base. I, maybe it, it can be even like a SQL file generated based on um, user data, but uh, in real world scenarios, um, most likely this will be something related to vector search. So you create embeddings based on uh, user uh, uh, query and uh, using vector search to your uh, in your knowledge base, because it has to support it. And uh, the, there are some uh, open source services available and we have Azure AI search that is fully here. And then, so you from your knowledge base or company knowledge base, you identify top three, mm -hmm. five, ten, depending on scenario, sources of information relevant to this particular call, and you inject these uh, sources of information straight to prompt, and uh, only then you send second call to generative AI endpoint to get the final answer. In real world situation, of course, uh, there, there can be multiple sources of, of information, right? Uh, so this is example of uh, virtual assistant for. Uh, sport, outdoors, e-commerce uh, solution and user asks, like, will my sleeping bag work for my trip to Patagonia next month? We, based on this uh, uh, question, we can identify lots of like, potential sources of information, lots of potential uh, requests to third party services. We gathered this data, compiled everything into one prompt, and then I asked the uh, Gen AI um, API to create answer 
in uh, human language. And then like uh, this way we uh, impress our user and uh, provided relevant information. Uh, I actually over overrun, so super briefly, tools, services, samples, just for you to know some, some keywords. To orchestrate this bunch of um, calls and uh, to create something like uh, to, to mimic kind of internal memory of the model on your backend and uh, to perform lots of other tasks on very nice um, abstraction level, very comfortable for developers, very good developer experience. Um, few uh, frameworks, few libraries are available. Langchain, Semantic Kernel, they are competitors. They do more or less the same simplified developer experience. Uh, applications, slightly different uh, set of uh, frameworks and language supported, slightly different terminology, but idea is the same, like, for proper dev experience. Uh, also, this is about, let's say, very developer part of the story, right? So once you build backend, you also have to do something with this. You have to deploy this, you have to monitor this, you have to check quality of uh, responses from uh, Gen AI endpoints from time to time. So it's actually full cycle and we can start reason about um, LLM ops. And uh, there are quite a few components what can be part of, of the story again, if, if it's not just built and forgot scenario. Maybe uh, it's, uh, I mean, for your, your customers do not, uh, do not expect like that. Uh, so you have to maintain this also, uh, right? Um, from from this uh, perspective, we, we, we have um, Azure AI Studio that I mentioned before that uh, helps you to actually stitch all, all the components I mentioned uh, earlier. And also, it gives you some extra possibilities. It, uh, for, for example, in, in many use cases, you don't even need power and uh, and cost of this Azure OpenAI endpoints. I mean, uh, you don't need GPT family of the model because there are tons of other models on the market, like uh, open source ones. So you can pick, for example, Llama from Meta, and if results are satisfactory, well, you just spin up virtual machine with this model on your own, and uh, yeah, then you only pay for the cost of running this virtual machine, and all these uh, calls to module itself are kind of free for you. Uh, and lots of lots of um, possibilities now with Azure Azure AI Studio, you can pick model from the catalog, you can uh, uh, fine tune this if if needed. And by the way, open source models are fine for fine tuning. And uh, you can spin up virtual machine with a couple of clicks. You can uh, then monitor and provide full uh, life cycle. Um, and we also have framework called Promptflow that uh, again in very developer friendly way based on uh, YAML, I mean, uh, perfect for um, um, DevOps and uh, all kinds of um, automations. Can can exp can like uh, imagine can uh, expose components of uh, backend that are responsible for communication with LLMs in form of flow, or more technically precise, in form of um, uh, graph with uh, like directed graph where every node. Uh, represents either call to this or that LLM. Again, you you, you pick here uh, in uh, UI editor or provide manually in uh, in YAML if you don't need uh, experience like this. Um, and uh, yeah, every node uh, in this graph either call to LLM or some uh, uh, snippet of uh, code in Python, for example, to parse result to uh, do string manipulations. Uh, some prompt templates where you inject information based on previous calls, and uh, yeah, after all, you send a uh, call, uh, call to final endpoint, and again, you can easily create application uh, from this uh, uh, from this flow. Uh, we have low-code slash no-code solution for using Azure OpenAI on your data, where you just literally upload uh, documents and start, in ch start chatting with them, also customizable and lots of uh, options uh, and samples available for RAG. I mean, just half a year ago, nothing existed here. Now we have tons of uh, GitHub repositories where you just uh, clone, uh, customize, and you have ready to go uh, at least foundation for your retail augmented generation service. I mean, don't start building this experience from scratch. You'll just uh, spend time. Just rely on what's here. It includes best practices, all um, important components for real-world projects, even more samples, so you'll uh, have all these links. 
And uh, prompt engineering, this is my separate uh, special uh, topic of interest uh, personally. I gathered the free resources for you to, to go through, and you can get some uh, free certifications here. Talking about uh, conferences, last October I organized world's first conference, prompt engineering conference, dedicated specifically to that topic, and as a result there are 10 hours of uh, video content on YouTube available for everyone. And that's it for, for that session, for myself. My main call to action, this is her code that leads to uh, my LinkedIn profile. And instead of you know uh, remembering all these links and everything, just contact me. It's my great pleasure to, uh, to share everything and um, yeah, chat about this and other topics.